when you think back to, you know, being a kid and where you are now and everything that you've done, like, was it, was it, was it what you expected it to be? Well, I used to imagine being on stage. I used to be like in my head. Um, I mean, I don't know. There's, there's parts of it that are, and there's parts of it like that are just more exciting than you could ever imagine. And then, you know, and just things like, I don't know, like when you're meeting bands at festivals and things like that, I sort of didn't imagine that bit. And just all the people in the industry, like whether they're just in catering or they're like roadies or you know, in bands or like journos like yourself, like everyone's all sort of such a small community and everyone's mm. everyone's there because they want to be there. It's like a, it's a fun, it's everyone's a, you know, it's always a good vibe. It's great people. And it's, a, yeah, just, and that's sort of part of it I didn't expect. And it's just, it's really fun. Yeah. And did you always know, like, that you wanted to be in a rock band? Was it kind of as soon as you picked up that guitar, you were like, okay, yep. this is now, we're going to go on a journey together? Yeah, like, that's why, I mean, I failed music at school because I kept wanting to play rock and roll and not learn, you know, the recorder, <laughs> you know, and stuff like that. So, no, I always wanted to do it. School to me was just kind of um, just like like hurry up and wait to, to play the you know, play in a band. So it was always something I knew I was going to do. Always always wanted to do it. And then you took your brother along for the ride as well. <laughs> yeah, you know you couldn't hold Ryan back. I mean, you know the, on the drums it was like as soon as as soon as we had the drums going, I think he was hitting pots and pans first, oh and then it was God. just just making noise, and it was just so much fun. It was like. Once it starts, the ball, you know, for that, it's it really is so. It's like, you know, when you have a big night on the piss or something, or and it's just like having the first drink and everyone's having so much fun, and all of a sudden you just like you have, you're so excited with every, all the good vibes, and then you end up really drunk. You're like, oh shit, I'm really drunk. There's a lot of people I know here. Uh oh, <laughs> you know, uh, it's kind of one of those things where you just it's a roller coaster that just goes, and you just you're just having so much fun. It's just yeah. like it's great. No, it is. I mean, what would you have done if you hadn't have done this, do you think? I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. I guess I would be, I don't know. I actually don't know. Maybe a roadie or something like that, you know, some, some way to be around rock and roll. I think I would have done something like that. But I never would have been away, f- away from just wanting to just get up there and just run around like an idiot, you know. Like, um, um, uh uh, yeah, I guess it's that whole ADD sort of thing. You just, once it's there, it's like you, you can't really, you know, you can't really hold it back. Was it you? I was, I think I read that you recently found out that you had ADHD. Yeah, yeah. And it kind of, like, it, it made that? a lot of sense. Yeah, but it's not that big of a deal. It's just kind of like, it's like most people around me said, oh, well, they just said, oh, yeah, I thought, you know, given given who you are and what you sort of do and stuff. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of good to know and then that way you sort of understand it a little bit. But um, I find it is great for playing gigs because I look back at it and look at the gig and go, wow, I look like a real idiot, you know, doing things like that, but I just don't really care when I'm on stage. And it's like it also gives you kind of a bit of a thing to just, you know, like climbing stuff and, and things like that. And just and also there's a thing about it with what's called hyper-focus. So for focusing on playing your guitar or just if you, it's something you love doing, you'll actually focus on it. If it's like doing the dishes or, you School know. School like, or something like that, then you're yeah, like, no, yeah. it's like, oh, you know, forget it. <laughs> it kind of ma- it makes sense though, doesn't it? And I think there's a lot of people in music that, you know, either suffer with something like, you know, whether it's is slightly on the spectrum with something of those, yeah. kind of, like, because you have to have that kind of real dedication um, yeah. and lock into something. So that makes sense. And after seeing you on stage, it definitely makes sense. Yeah, it's just that thing, you know, it's like it could be the kid with the red cordial in the playground that's really like just screaming his head off and running around and going, oh, geez, I feel sorry for the parents, you know, this kid. <laughs> it's like, but give him a stage and a guitar and fast forward 20 years. <laughs> and he's out there Perfect outlet around. for yeah. it, yeah. It's like the whole world's your playground, you know. It's like let him loose, you know. <laughs> I know. It's funny in that, like you say, with the climbing, I read that you're actually scared of heights. Yeah, like, like I... Um, uh, when I went on to that red hot, what was that before that red hot summer 
thing. I was looking out the window of the hotel we were staying in and I was looking out over the thing. I was like, whoa, I've actually got a bit of vertigo again. And I had to just like force myself to stand there to look at it and go, all right, it's all right. It's just height. Don't worry. But I, vertigo is a thing. And it was, it was always a thing. But like you said at the beginning of this whole interview, the guitar that you have in your hands or on, in that case, on my back, it just gives you this sort of like confidence to do Superman shit. <laughs> you know? Like it's like that. Yeah. It's nuts, isn't it? I mean, yeah. Jesus Christ. Because I've seen, you know, I've seen you cl- when you were doing your climbing and stuff. I know you're not allowed to do it anymore because it's, it's always in the contract to say you're not allowed to climb. Um, yeah. But, like, have you ever been up there and then got stuck? Because I've done that where I've climbed up something and then I think, oh, my God, I can't get down now. Yeah. Yeah, not, not exactly like a cat, you know, when they've got to get the fireman to come around and get the cat out of the tree. Yeah. It, like, it, it's happened, it's happened, um, well, it happened at a kind of, it happened at download where they turned the power off, and but you see, it was raining that day as well, and it was actually kind of, it was actually really hard to get back down, yeah. uh, especially without the power of the guitar and everything, because they t- literally turned the power off. So it was like one of those moments where you've really got to focus on it. Um, but look, there's, there was a time in Poland they had this festival that was just wild. It was really crazy. They had a quarter of a million people there. It was 250,000 people. It was like lawless. They had to drive a fire truck through the middle to squirt water on the people up in the front half of the festival because they were thirsty. They couldn't really sort of get out of it. It was oh just, it God. was wild. And I went for a climb that day and I got up to the top and the, the truss that I was on felt like it was like came loose and there was a, fucking piece of garden hose that was holding it at the top there so it was like it sort of went like that i was like i'm looking at it going that's garden hose wow that's garden hose okay gotta do the solo real quick solo now and we're gonna get back down so we did a real quick little just and then we get fucked back down <laughs> i was like Shit. you're like the the, the the constant professional quick solo and then i get down rather than like yeah. oh shit get yep. down yeah <laughs> Instead of the normal, you know, how many bars it is, like, say, I don't know, however long I spent three minutes up there, this one's going to be a nice little 13-second solo and we're, we're straight back in. <laughs> oh, my God. That is brilliant. Yep. I was reading um, about your influences and it had Spinal Tap on there. Yes. Was yes. that just, a, like, a, a rubbish thing that's not true that you've ever said? Or are Spinal Tap an influence? <laughs> and, and, no, and no, absolutely. absolutely. So when Ryan and I were kids, we would go to the, the video shop and rent a VH videotape. <laughs> and it was, I remember um, those Spinal days. Tap. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, and we get Spinal Tap. And we thought it was a band because, you know, there's no internet other than, like, dial-up modems that do that thing. Yeah. Um, so there was no real internet other than an email. So we thought this band Spinal Tap was real. Like, we were like, wow, who's this great band, you know? And then like, they're like, look at this documentary, look at this hard time they have, and like and all this sort of stuff. We actually learned uh, that, that, that riff that goes... <laughs> That song, I want to rock you, whatever it is, tonight. And the fucking, um, that song that they play, I want to rock you or something like that. I can't remember what it's called, but we learned how to play that. We thought they were a real band and we were like, you know, um, this is something we can learn from and things like that. And like they have the, you know, and the, we just, we actually, we laughed at stuff, but we were like, wow, it's really fun being in a band. We thought they were real, like Davidson Hubbins was, was real, Nigel Tufnell, I, I don't play that, don't even look at it. It was like, wow, I used to sit there going, wow, look at these guitars, you are not even going to touch that one. <laughs> oh, Kids. my God. That is so yeah, funny. Then- so tell me, when you got your first amp, did you go, but this doesn't go up to 11? <laughs> yeah, I did. I was like, I, want, I actually want to get one that goes up to 11. I used to go to the music shop. I had a job working in the music shop, and I look at the other one doesn't go to 11. You know, and um, and stuff like that. And it wasn't until like you know, later on in life, when you start meeting you know people in, in Melbourne because we grew up in Warrnambool, little town, and the internet, and going, oh, it's a it's a spoof, it's not real, <laughs> and, and stuff like that. But the funny thing is, though, I've got to say it: like all that shit that we thought was real has actually happened. Like like the thing where they get lost to the stage, that happens at least 
once a month on tour at least. Like where you're literally like walking outside the venue going, fuck, like where is the stage? I thought we were there at Soundcheck. Why have we how have we messed this up? Yeah. It really happens. Like all that spinal tap stuff but yeah it was legit like we, we and we love their logo we're like you see their logo is cool you know like <laughs> <laughs> that story i love it oh my god and then, yeah and I, I guess you've probably walked out and said hello cleveland as well and oh that yeah stuff when you, you think that. it's somewhere else yeah yeah de- totally done that fully done we just we did that in america a lot actually it's funny because i don't know there's just so many towns that you play that you do like 50 50 shows in like you know, a, a month or two or something yeah. like that. And then there's so many places. But I also get names of places wrong. There's a place, and I know how to say it now, in New Zealand called Dunedin. And I ran out on stage, and, and this is in front of Alice Cooper's crowd. We were supporting Alice Cooper. And I run out there and go, how you going, Dunny Doon? And then like, what? And it's Dunedin. It's like, I'm going, Dunny Doon rocks. And I did it like 10 times throughout the gig. And then I get off stage and Mark... Our front of house guy, tour manager, goes, mate, you do know it's Dunedin. I'm like, oh, I thought it was Dunny Doon. <laughs> it's like, no, that's not even anywhere in the world. That's, they just made that up. <laughs> I'm like, right, that's why they didn't get it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you were like, this crowd's going to be a hard one to win over as they all stand there and look at you like dead pack. Yeah, I'm like, am I saying something wrong? Am I offending them? Like, yeah, you're not even, they're just, you're just saying noises. <laughs> So, uh, so when you came to London, then are you like, are you a Leicester Square? Oh wow, yeah. I mean, I would, I would look at Leicester, Lice, Lice, I would just get it wrong, you know. And but yeah, Leicester Square, yep, Leicester. But even you got the Aussie accent that's hard to hard to un- un- understand, other than London or. Sheffield or places like that, you know, yeah. like the easy ones to get. <laughs> oh my god, that's brilliant! That's great. So, what was the what was the um, the record or the song that changed it all for you? That was that was a band called the song was called Boogie, and the band is called the Atlantic Rhythm Section. ARS know, was there. I know that song. Yeah. It's quite bluesy, isn't it? Kind of, um, it I think kind of, they were American band. Well, they were a Southern rock band, weren't they? Yeah, and it starts out, it's got a real slow groove to it, and then it, there's a point where it kicks in. He's, he's, he sings, I went to bed with an angel and woke up with the devil in my bed. And when he sings that, the band goes into double time and the whole thing, all they want is boogie, and they just do this great kick-ass half of a song and that just when I was a kid I was like I love how it starts out slow and then it just goes whack and I was like this is gutsy and I even learned the riff in the in the middle of it goes it's very ACDC even before ACDC this funny you say that I thought exactly the same thing I, I was trying yeah. to think what a it sounds like a particular ACDC song as well, and I can't think what yeah, one it, it is. Sounds like, it sounds like it sounds like Dirty Deeds. It's got that. But that's their one, and then you play Dirty Deeds. I mean, yeah, it's very it's very similar. And funny, so back to you know we're talking about um, smoke on the water. Yeah. Well, if you do T and T, it's uh, it's the same, but it's, it's kind of different, you know, like in a different key. But if you do it in the same, if you do T and T. I think T and T is better. But um, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's funny how riffs, even with the same chords, you can play them totally different and it can be a totally different song you never even would have thought. It's with it's in the like it's in the hands or the attitude of the band and everything. But that's that's good for people like me who don't really know that much of like in terms of we're way around the guitar, like it's like Steve Vai and all those sort of guys. If you know a few chords and a, a sort of a scale here or there, you can you can you can rock. Like quite easy. That makes me happy. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're totally doing great. Yep, you can play yeah. Sabbath, Black Sabbath, ACDC, any of them. Yep. 
Yeah, because I, I can, I mean, as much as I love it, it can be bloody frustrating at time, especially yep. when you listen to, you know, the guys that you love, like Hendrix, or you're listening to Vi or Bonamass or someone like that. Yeah. And you, I'm so far from that. It's like, it can get overwhelming because you just think, I'm never going to be able to do it. It's kind of a bit soul destroying. So that's why it's quite good just to play the, the three chords and you can take, yep. on, take on the world. Yeah, well, you know, status quo made a whole career out of that. And they did that over and over and over and over again. I mean, there's a lot of technicality in their rhythm and things like that. But the thing is, it's what you love playing. If you just love playing three chords, if you if you could play a million notes a minute, if that makes you happy, that makes you happy. But to me, that even though I can't really do that, I, I know it wouldn't make me happy. I just want to hit big chords, hit them loud, and then just – Fucking like you want to move with the thing and rock, you know, and, and have fun. And if, if that's something that is so easy to do, especially if you love doing that, you know. Joel, thank you so much for coming on the show. I mean, that's a nice way to end it on that note. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there we go. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's great to talk to you. I'm glad that you're learning guitar. That's exciting. I can't wait to, you know, do an interview you know, at, at Donington or somewhere again in this oh. whole festival, and you've got the guitars set up, we can have a jam. We should definitely do that next time, actually, yes. for Ky sure. Yeah, I mean... Kylie's I Jam to Tent. A you've got to do Kylie's Jam Tent, where you've got the amps and the drums, you go, right, we're doing this song, and you just jam with bands. So you've got to start learning. Jam with learning. bands, there we go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm going to hold you to that. Yeah, do it. You're coming yeah, well, in for the jam, down. baby. Yep. Absolutely, I'm down. I think I'm still hung over from the last time we uh, we parted together, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll oh, never I forget that. that. It days. was like, do you want a drink? Yeah, I have a Jack and Coke. And you, like, took a pint, filled it up with the Jack. And I was like, yeah. Where, where's the Coke? <laughs> <laughs> Man, what? that was such – that was so much fun. That was, that was a great – that was a – that was like the sun was coming up, I think, when that ended. Um, what, that was. was one of them ones. Yep. That was, <laughs> was my first player. time, my first time and my last time getting drunk on a tour bus. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> those days aren't too far away, hopefully. You know, given oh, the, fingers every... crossed. Come on, bring yep. it on. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Joel, thank you. Take care of yourself. And um, we'll I'll see you soon, hopefully. Take care, Kylie. Great to see your smiling face, and we'll see you soon. Love from yeah. Australia. 